Hello, I'm Phil Hambaker with Default Deny Security and I want to give a preview of next week's RSA conference. Now, every year at the conference, one of the big events is the Cryptographers Panel. It's manned by the founders of the field and traditionally it's been one of the places where the big news in the industry has broken. In 2005, it was where we heard about the new wave of cryptanalytic attacks against digest functions, the SHA-1 attacks. So, what, why does this matter? Well, it matters to me because I'm a protocol designer. Why does it matter to you? Well, today, cryptography is the basis of modern commerce. Internet commerce depends upon protocols like SSL and TLS and SMIME, and without them, the internet is not secure. And the security of those protocols, in, depend, in return, depend upon the security of the algorithms that are used. There are attacks that matter, and there are attacks that don't. So what are the types of attack that matter? Well, first of all, let's look at the degree of difficulty. Cryptographers very rarely break an algorithm all at once. Usually they start off by taking weakened forms of the algorithm. They'll do fewer rounds, they will change key sizes, they will manipulate a few bits here and there, and that makes it easier to break. That's cause to write a paper, not really a great deal of cause for concern until they get close to being able to break a complete component in the algorithm. A message digest function like SHA-1 consists of two parts, a compressor function and an iterator function. Breaking the compressor function doesn't mean that there's a fully weaponized attack that can be used against internet commerce, but it's certainly cause for concern. And once you've got an, a fully, full break against the full algorithm, well, then you've got to take immediate action and start withdrawing things from service. There's a set of preferred algorithms that protocol designers like to rely on. So for public key cryptography, we tend to use RSA, Diffie-Hellman. Increasingly, people are starting to use elliptic curve variations. We don't, nobody really is expecting to hear big news there. We might possibly hear of a slightly longer RSA key size being broken, but that doesn't provide for a real attack of live running protocols, not until they can start to break 1000 bit RSA keys or higher. On encryption side, well, the preferred algorithm there is AES, which is a relatively new algorithm that everybody is pretty confident in. But there's an outside chance that we might hear a real bombshell on RC4. And if that happens, it's head for the exits time, it could be big news. But the place where everybody is really expecting to hear further news and further developments is in the digest algorithms area. The attacks on SHA-1 have been improving and SHA-2, which was intended to be the replacement, uses the same basic construction. Now, there is a program in place to develop a SHA-3 algorithm to replace it, and there's a competition in place, but that's not even going to report until next year, so there is a big issue there. Now, those are the preferred algorithms, but security is not just a matter of the cryptographic algorithms you use. It depends upon the cryptographic algorithms you trust. If you trust a weak algorithm, it can compromise your security even if you're not using it. Now, on the public key side, no, DSA is less used than RSA, but again, there's not much uh, worry there. There really isn't a lot of worry about 3DES. But again, the message digest functions are where the action is. And there are real concerns that there might be further attacks in that area as well. So, what are message digest functions and how are they used? Well, message digest functions are used as a component in a digital signature. And although we use RSA to create the digital signature itself, RSA is a public key algorithm, and public key algorithms tend to be relatively slow. They take a long time for the number of bits they process. And so we almost always use a public key algorithm with a complementary bulk algorithm and a message digest function was originally invented to provide a bulk function to complement public key cryptography and digital signatures. So you don't, if you've got a billion bits to 
sign. You don't sign every one of them with RSA. You process them first with your message digest function, which is quick and fast, and then you put the result through the digital signature algorithm. And in particular, they're used in digital certificates. So any attack against a message digest function also provides leverage against a certificate. And once you can unpick the digital certificate functions, the PKI for the internet, you can unravel all the cryptographic security. Now, they were designed originally for use in digital signatures, but since then, they're such neat things they use for other pr purposes. And in particular, message digest functions are often used to provide a one-way index into a database. So you've got the index, it allows you to look up the data, but unless you've got access to the data, seeing the index doesn't disclose the data itself. It's a neat trick and it's useful in many, it's used in many protocols. So that's how we use message digest functions, but what is a message digest function? Well, a message digest function is a cryptographic algorithm that has three important properties. The first important property is that it is one way. That means that given a document, a sequence of bits, it is easy to calculate the message digest function. However, going in the reverse direction, if you've got the message digest and working out what the original document was, that should be hard. A good digest algorithm is also resistant to modification. Given a document, a sequence of bits X, it should be very difficult, cryptographically infeasible, for an attacker to find another document, X prime, that gives the same result with the hash function. And a good digest function is also collision resistant. That is, it is very difficult for an attacker to find two values that map to the same hash value. So a good algorithm is one way modification resistant and collision resistant. And compromise of any one of those three qualities is an attack, a break of the algorithm. So what do we get? Well, usually the first type of attack that's successful is a hash collision. We're attacking the collision resistance. And if you can attack the collision resistance of the message digest, you, the attacker can then create two documents, X1 and X2. Send the first one, X1, off to be signed. The signer looks at it, checks it, and signs it. And in doing so, also unwittingly signs the second document, X2. And that could be real trouble. Now, this is in particular a problem for certificate authorities who have to make sure that they audit their systems to make sure they've got proper countermeasures in place so that they don't rely on this property of their digest function. So the next level of attack, which is considerably harder, is against the modification resistance property of the algorithm, the so-called second pre-image attack. So given an already signed document, the attacker manages to find a second document that can use the same signature as the first. Now, this is a really difficult attack. If it happens, it will have really major impact across the industry and a lot of running code that will have to be made obsolete and retired from service. So the final form of attack is against the one-way function of the message digest. And if this happens, in particular, if it was to happen against MD5, which is widely used as a one-way function, even though it is no longer trusted as a cryptographic message digest for digital signatures. If that was to happen, well, it's game over. You can't use that message digest for any purpose and a whole heap of running code would have to be changed. Fortunately, that is a very, very slim chance. So what's gonna happen? Well, I don't know. So we'll have to go to the panel next week and find out. Thank you for watching.